brief history of Woodstock. It was just a little less than a year ago that Paul and Schwarm and Adam and I had this idea to produce something that was like the This American Life stage show, but a little bit geekier. We thought it would give us an opportunity to perform with some people who are our favorite nerds and our favorite performers, sort of an overlapping perfect circle of the Venn diagram. But we weren't sure if anyone else would like it as much as we did. So we started out with a small show in San Francisco. That show sold out and sank into this one. So we did a second show in San Francisco. That show sold out and sank into this one. So we went to do a show in Los Angeles. That show sold out, burned down, fell over, and sank into this one. But every show since then has sold out and it stayed. We feel like we're surrounded by people who love the same things we do. They love science. They love math. They love science fiction and history and music and lol cats. <laughs> and double rainbows all the way! <laughs> we define our lives in hashtags, 140 characters at a time. <laughs> and we knew that we had made something awesome by accident. So we began to plan more Woodstocks. We laid a calendar out in front of us. Well, there was a big red X through July. We couldn't do a show in July because we were all going to be at Comic-Con. <laughs> we're all going to be at Comic-Con. A lot of really cool, interesting, entertaining, intelligent people we know are also going to be at Comic-Con. Hey, guys! Do you think anyone will come if we do a show? <laughs> I don't know where Woodstock goes next, but I know that right now, Woodstock is here. We're going to have an incredibly awesome time tonight. Now, Texas might be on, might be on the list. It might, it might be on the list. Whatever city you just said, yes, that's on our list. <laughs> Now, we're going to start the show out a little bit differently than we normally do. Uh, usually, we put this particular performer in the second half of the show, sort of an anchor for the second half, to sort of uh, give everybody something really exciting to look forward to in the second half of the show. Because everybody loves the Mythbusters. And we are lucky enough to have the most attractive Mythbuster. The Mythbuster who really carries the show. The Mythbuster who's really responsible for everything that, that makes Mythbusters exactly what it is. And we're going to start the show with him. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you'd please welcome to the stage, me really stretching because he's not where he's supposed to be. Hold on, uh, maybe we do need a flare gun. Remember that time that I was doing the introduction at Woodstock and we had this awesome thing planned and then the whole thing fell apart when I was standing on stage with everybody? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Jamie Hyman. Just kidding, Adam will be on for that. 